Not every game intends to be outright terrible, at least not from the start. Some tantalize you with what could be good, flashes of that shine in the early going, but as time goes by, things just get worse. And sadly, it's a pretty common occurrence for games in the industry. So let's take a look at 15 such games that worsened as we continued playing them. The Bard's Tale 4 The Bard's Tale 4 was quite the adventure for In Exile. Tasked with living up to the classic trilogy, it started off promisingly enough and quickly descended into a series of bugs, terrible design decisions, and performance issues. Some aspects, like the music and combat, would shine here and there, but ultimately it felt limiting and borderline annoying to progress through. The director's cut would fix a number of issues, but that's far from high praise. Final Fantasy XIII When starting Final Fantasy XIII, you're thrust into a world of confusing terms and events. Lassie, Pulse, Falsy, Nora, and the list goes on as you struggle for that moment when the game opens up. It looks great though, and the combat is pretty good, so you want to stick with it, but it just keeps going, on rails and locked in linear corridors and irritating characters and poor interactions. Finally, finally, after 20 hours or so, you're done with the tutorial and can kind of, sort of, have some freedom. Was it worth it though? Overkills The Walking Dead a co-op shooter from the team behind the Payday series set in a world overrun by zombies doesn't sound unappealing. Overkill's The Walking Dead, however, served up a big hot pile of trash. The decent gunplay and atmosphere quickly gave way to bad mission design, repetitive gameplay, technical problems, and, well, no checkpoints for some of the longer missions, at least at launch. The game was such an abject failure on all fronts that IP owner Skybound Entertainment would terminate its contract with publisher Starbreeze and abandon it. Anthem Anthem seemed sketchy when its E3 2018 presentation was little more than some combat, flying, and concept art. The future seemed promising, but reports of developments struggling to reach deadlines continued to flow, right up to the subpar beta. When Anthem launched, technical issues and bugs aside, it seemed fine, if a little light on story, and utterly gorgeous. Then it hit the tomb of General Tarsus, and took a nosedive, requiring several asinine task completions to progress. From there, the barren endgame, terrible loot system, awful writing, and underwhelming ending took center stage. Fallout 76 Fallout 76 began as a mess literally minutes into playing and somehow got worse. The content on offer was little more than dumb side quests and collecting junk while listening to rambling audio logs. When you weren't encountering massive game-breaking bugs, the server would crash. Even in its current state, with nuclear winter, raids, events, and, uh, oh, the $13 monthly subscription for quality of life features that should be in the game, Fallout 76 still suffers from numerous issues and bugs the longer you play. The Quiet Man The Quiet Man's setup was unorthodox, taking place from the perspective of someone who can't hear. But the awful combat and storytelling, the latter mixing live action with gameplay, ensured that things quickly turned sour. The Quiet Man was such an awful game that developer Human Head Studios actually released an update that added the sound back in and explained the story, which turned out to be much, much dumber than we thought. Ghost Recon Breakpoint The terrible performance and utter butchering of everything that made Wildlands, forget Ghost Recon, so memorable has been well documented. What's surprising amid all of the dumb RPG light systems, shoddy AI, and glitches is just how well it all seemed to start. You crash land on Aurora trying to avoid the wolves while witnessing Coldy Walker, a former ghost, killing his own. There's a moderate degree of stealth involved too. Of course, then it's off to rendezvous with the locals and battle countless annoying drones in a barren world with repetitive missions and embarrassing dialogue. Rage 2 From the outset, Rage 2 offers some solid shooting mechanics, which only gets better as you collect your first few weapons, like the shotgun and suit upgrades. Despite the oomph of the action and decidedly sharp visuals, the barrenness and lack of variety in the open world became more apparent. Couple this with a dull and short story, cheesy characters, and odd design decisions, and Rage 2 would fizzle out way before its lame final boss. Dead Rising 4 Frank West is back, baby! What could have been better than returning to Willamette, the place where it all began to slaughter zombies? Well, as it turns out, many things. Dead Rising 4 not only looked fairly rickety in the visual department, but was just plain dull in gameplay, and that's saying something considering it has exosuits. While the story was somewhat interesting, the removal of the timer, more comedic tone, and overall dull world just began to wear on us as time went by. Artifact 
Valve's artifact was booed from the moment of its reveal, but despite the complexity of seemingly melding the popular MOBA, Dota 2, with a CCG, early impressions seemed strong. When the game released, it was suitably praised for its gameplay and presentation. It wasn't free to play, mind you, and features like purchasing, not trading, cards in the Steam marketplace quickly earned it the dreaded pay-to-win label. Combine this with other bad decisions and artifact quickly tanked. Heroes of the Storm once again, the idea sounds so good. A MOBA that's a crossover between various Blizzard properties like Diablo, StarCraft, and Warcraft, with games like Overwatch coming later. Heck yeah! Each character had their own awesome abilities, and the game looked great. There was just one problem. It wasn't a fun MOBA. The design of the maps was weighted towards completing objectives, which seemed obtuse at times compared to, say, destroying an enemy's towers and base. This resulted in tediously drawn-out matches. Balancing and hero variety wasn't nearly as strong as its competitor Dota either, resulting in a MOBA that remained a good idea on paper, but not much else. Resident Evil 6 Some may look back on Resident Evil 6 and say it was underappreciated. I look back on it in utter disdain. Despite featuring all of the lovable and recognizable characters like Leon, Sherry, and Chris, Resident Evil 6's story spiraled into nonsense with straight-up awful pacing. Is Ada evil? Is she not? Does she have a clone? These are only a few questions you'll fail to care about amid the repetitive and tacked-on action elements with missions that drag on seemingly forever. Wolfenstein Young Blood. Though we knew that BJ Blazkowicz wasn't the protagonist, the prospect of playing as his death-dealing daughters was still appealing. This quickly unraveled for a few reasons at launch. Firstly, the sister AI in-game was pretty bad, at times not reviving you and others seemingly dying in No Man's Land. Secondly, the game's world and RPG light shooting and systems felt bad, especially the different ammo types and lack of checkpoints and missions. Finally, even if some of those things have since been fixed, the daughters are annoying characters without any of the nuance that made their father so great. Left Alive A third-person stealth game in the Front Mission universe with art by Metal Gear's Yoji Shinkawa? Why not? Well, because it's awful. It starts off with a military invasion and three separate characters, but quickly devolves into a mishmash of terrible stealth and survival mechanics. Nearly everything about this game is terrible, which is a shame given the talent behind it. Crackdown 3 After all the delays and hype about cloud-based destruction, Crackdown 3 seemingly arrived as just another open-world shooter with over-the-top action, which is fine in itself, but as a slightly nicer-looking take on the formula from a decade ago. Crackdown 3 didn't offer much more beyond routine shooting, driving, and platforming. The longer you play, the more dreary it gets, as everything blends together and you forget what the point is. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.